Welcome, this is Michael Schulman and thanks for watching. They said it would not happen, the American consumer would never change. They would always max out their credit cards, buy a lot of stuff, go to a store and buy storage for that stuff, get a bigger house to store that stuff, and then go out and buy some more stuff. But it has happened. The American consumer has changed. And Wall Street, no surprise here, has missed this change big time. Please do not miss this. I call this change the new frugal. It is an investment thesis, one of 10 core investment theses that serve as the basis for my view of the market. The new frugal has already produced wonderful returns from names ranging from Ralph Lauren to Dollar General, the polar ends of the consumer market. Perhaps the biggest change in the American consumer, this new frugal, is a secular change in shopping trends in the U.S., something permanent, a change that is altering the spending habits of all consumers. This quiet but enormous shift began during the crash, continued through the Great Recession, and it is not just a matter of people spending less. Yes, people are spending less in real terms, but they are spending more on fewer items. They are being more selective where they spend. They are basing their decisions on customer service and the perceived quality of a brand and its products. The new frugal consumer spends good money on high quality brands. They also spend their only money at the local discount store on bread and milk. They use online community purchasing to take a vacation, eat out at a pizzeria with a coupon, or get 50% off their favorite yoga class. The 12 gifts for the little ones under the Christmas tree is now one iTouch or an iTunes gift card. The shopping spree at Marshalls is now one beautiful bag from Coach. The people who ate out four times a week now eat out three times a week and at least one night involves a group purchase coupon obtained online. And the Walmart shopper, who previously had filled two carts at the end of the month, now goes out to a dollar store on payday. Why is this happening? From 2002 to 2008, the entire growth in consumer spending in the United States was matched dollar for dollar with drawdowns in home equity lines of credit. The party ended with the post Lehman Brothers bankruptcy crash and is not starting up again anytime soon. This exhaustion of credit, massive unemployment, falling wealth, remember Americans have lost $13 trillion in net worth since 2008, have all reduced and changed how Americans spend money. Those who can afford it have shifted up market, buying fewer things but buying higher quality things and buying them in venues with better service. Those at the bottom of the economic ladder have gone from once a month shopping forays at Walmart to once a week grocery shopping at the dollar store, the newly opened dollar store. And those looking at convenience, service, quality, and reduced expense have turned their sights to the online world in all its forms, from Amazon to group buying. What Wall Street, in its infinite wisdom, terms luxury brands are no longer just luxury brands. I prefer the terms high-end and quality, something quite different from just luxury. These are also mass market brands for those looking for a quality, a brand consciousness, a reputation, a service associated previously just with luxury. Those great names in American international luxury, Ralph Lauren, Coach, Nordstrom, they all have lower price goods. They have outlet stores. They sell online. You can buy a $35 gift I have at Tiffany's, but you still get the little box of Robin's Egg Blue and the smile on the face of the person receiving that gift when he or she recognizes it is from Tiffany's. Walmart is no longer the cheapest game in town, at least not for cash-strapped people, for people who outpace their check from work or unemployment check before week's end. They shop week to week, some shop day to day, and they have created incredible growth in what used to be the lowest end of the marketplace, the dollar and super discount stores. If you have not been in one, please go to one. They are not just small stores crammed with junk from China or malformed leftovers from some major manufacturer. These dollar stores now sell milk and bread and fruit and deodorant and cashews. They are no longer the venue of choice just for the poor and the working poor or those without access to a real supermarket. They are open and doing business with everyone. On a recent visit to one of these stores at the beginning of the month, there was a line waiting for shopping carts. The store was full, and more than half the people online were retirees. 
For those of you who do not shop a great deal or at all online, it is a brave and, to my mind, a better new world. I eat at my favorite deli using a Groupon coupon 50% off. I buy everything from dog treats and toilet paper to books on Amazon. Free shipping, no sales taxes. One of my sons just bought his winter parka at Land's End, 40% off, one day only, at the website only, free shipping. I just spent monies on 40 holiday gifts via Amazon for someone collecting toys for a party for little kids, possibly looking at an empty Christmas. Again, no shipping charges, no sales tax. Who drives anymore to Staples to get their ink for their printer? The great high-end names are what you think they are. I put them in a luxury basket and view them as one whole position. Coach, Nordstrom, Tiffany, Ralph Lauren. Great growth prospects, great charts. And then there is the great upmarket retailer and upmarket product manufacturer no one ever puts into those two categories, a company you may have heard of called Apple. Apple stores will generate more than $5,500 per square foot in revenue this year. The next closest retailer in the U.S. will generate a bit more than $900 a square foot. End of discussion. Even though the stock is seen by some as quite high, it's going much higher. The low-end names you need to look at do not start with Walmart. Walmart is a dead stock, a company losing market share every week, with no plans to jumpstart growth and using price and price alone to hold on to market share. They're getting hurt by the dollar stores with 2,500 new dollar stores to be opened in 2012, while Walmart is opening just 50 small footprint stores. To me, that is like bringing a knife to a gunfight. The pick of the litter among the dollar stores is Dollar General. They opened 625 stores in 2011. Same store sales growth is north of 5%. They remodeled or moved 575 stores in 2011. They are on a roll. And so is Costco. Costco does not cater to discount buyers. The company caters to smart shoppers and small business, the heart of the new frugal. For those who have credit and can stock up once a month, Costco has easily surpassed Walmart as the store of choice. About the online world, don't bother yourself with details. The only online play that is not vulnerable to another online company is Amazon. It's the best site, it has the best service, the best product selection, and as a company, the best growth. Sign up for free shipping for $79 a year. You get a family of instant videos almost as large as those offered by Netflix. You want to return something? Print out the label and they pay for return postage. Do you want to buy a low-cost toy for that above-mentioned children's party? Type in paint set, select free shipping only, rank by price, and read customer reviews about the product. Well, there you have it. And yes, that is me, Dicking Pete, on the island of Isla, off of Scotland, as part of my duties working in a distillery for a week, a 50th birthday gift from my family in a country that manages its own currency, right now a very beautiful thing. When I am back at my day job, this is what I do. I dig, I dig again. Online, the malls, at the outlet malls, at the strip malls, at the warehouse clubs. You gotta do it in person. And here I am in another whiskey sitting, enjoying the success of all that hard work. In the coming weeks, I will continue to bring you my dig and dig again research, and you too can enjoy that success. I will bring you the best ideas about new frugal investing opportunities and, in particular, let you know about those stocks whose prices are likely to get a boost in 2012. Stay tuned, and thank you.